Well, good morning. God is good? And all the time? Amen. It's really good to see your beautiful faces today. And a wonderful time to come back together. It's been a while, right? It's been a while, so praise the Lord. So I just want to thank you for coming today. And for those of you online, we thank you for being with us today. And I'm just going to open up with a couple of verses. Psalm 34, and it says, verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. We want to boast all the time in the Lord, amen? And the humble shall hear of it and be glad. And then it says in verse 3, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Amen? Amen. So together, we're going to exalt the name of the Lord. We're going to give him the glory. He deserves everything. And so we want to do that today. And so please join me in prayer this morning. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we can be together to worship you. Lord, may our worship be... Uh, wonderful fragrance, a sweet aroma to your throne. May you be blessed, Lord. You are awesome. You are majestic. And Lord, we want to praise you. We want to give you thanks. And so, Father, may your spirit fall afresh upon us today and fill us. Fill us with your spirit and help us, Lord, to focus on you each moment, each day of our lives. We thank you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, this is a little strange because we're trying to be live with social distancing in our lives. So I know we usually go ahead around and greet each other, but let's just let's just start our own symbol today. Let's just go like this. That's our imaginary hug. So um, you're welcome to stand. Just don't go near each other. <laughs> Go, turn around to your neighbor, give them the, that hug right there. Make that eye connection and just like, I'm here with you. I'm hugging you. <laughs> but honestly, it is so good to see you all here today. Um, obviously, you can hug your, the people who came with you to church today. That's fine. Um, but we just, uh, we just, good to see you, Mark. We just want to say how excited we are just to be here, um, just with a few that are present, just to know that... Um, the, the the tide is turning you know we're, we can slowly come out of our caves get away from our tvs <laughs> go on walks with other people <laughs> but um with that we encourage you um to stand even if you're watching at home you can stand at home but we're going to go ahead and sing some songs of praise together the first song being let the king of my heart be the mountain where i run a lot of stuff going on in our lives but just the fact that we can leave our house today and just be with each other, it, it's just such a blessing. So let's sing together. Clap. I know we might be feeling a little nervous because, you know, we're going live. But, you know, we're here. We're here. We're, let's just be ourselves. Let's just enjoy each other's company, enjoy the Lord's presence, and um, praise him. Let's sing. Let the king of my heart be the ransom for my life, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good.
presence to Lord today to sing with with each other the Lord's praises we're gonna sing he knows my name it's hard to keep in touch when we're far apart right but we are never forgotten God knows exactly what's been going on in each and every one of our lives so he knows our name amen, amen. let's sing this And hears me when I 
each tear that falls and hears me when I fall. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear. Let us become more 
by your presence this morning, whether we're at home in our couches or whether we're here at church for the first time in like, I don't know how many months, like two or three months, God, we praise you <laughs> that we can come together and worship you wherever we are. And may, God, your presence fill inside us, God, and not just in the church, but outside this building too. God, we love you. In your name I pray. Amen. I'm going to have Janae come and read our scripture reading for us today, John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. The Good Shepherd and His Sheep I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate, must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what it meant, so he explained it to them. I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to him. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely, and you will find pastors. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Now, when you left your house, did you lock 
says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Now, to understand this a little bit more, what the context is, in chapter 9, uh, there was a story of a blind man, and he was healed by Jesus. The, the story where Jesus spit on the ground and made a clay and put it in his eyes and had him go and wash in the, in the water, and he was able to see. But when he went to the temple, the Pharisees were giving him a hard time. They even asked him to bring his parents to come over and to explain it. At any rate, he was kicked out of the temple, this blind man, by these so-called shepherds, right? So-called leaders, these Pharisees. And so here, Jesus is going to talk about this, right? He's going to talk about what it really means to be a shepherd, what it really means to be a sheep. And so, in this one, verse 1, it says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door. Now, what is a sheepfold? Now, a sheepfold is an area where you put the sheep in to be secured from animal attacks or from thieves. So it's usually like a cave. Uh, sometimes they have a cave or sometimes they have... Uh, rocks that they put like a big square or a rectangle or a circle and then it's about you know pretty high and sometimes the shepherd would put some some thorns around it so that they'll prevent anybody from coming in and that sheepfold has one door and on that one door the shepherd sits and secures all the sheep and so that's what it means, the sheepfold. And I just want to say to you that you are so valuable. You are so valuable that Jesus sits and, or stands by that door and he secures you inside the sheepfold. Amen? Amen. And I just want to emphasize that because sometimes we think that Jesus doesn't care, God doesn't care, no one cares about me. And I want to tell you today that Jesus is the Good Shepherd, and He is the door. He is the door by which all the sheep go through and are secured inside the sheepfold. Now, the interesting thing is that about the sheep is that they're not like lions, right? They're they're usually defenseless. They have a lot of uh, wool, very heavy. Sometimes they say that their eyes are not too good. They can't see really good. And sometimes they have to cut the, the wool off from their eyes so they can see better. And they even known to have small brains, right? Small brains. Uh, they're not that smart. So these sheep, they need a shepherd. They need protection. And so... The shepherd takes all these sheep and put them in the, sh the sheepfold to protect them. But you know what? It says right there in verse, uh, it, it says that there's a thief and a robber that will come. And it's very interesting because they're valuable, those sheep are valuable, and you can think of yourself as the sheep, you're valuable for us, you know, in the eyes of God. But you're also um, valuable so much that the thief wants to come and get you. Now, practically speaking, the sheep is good for what? The wool. They can make clothing out of it. And, of course, who likes lamb? Lamb chops. Okay, so uh, it's a very valuable um, item. And so a lot of people want to get them. And what happened is that the thief comes. Doesn't come through the door, but comes in the back, climbs over the wall, and comes inside the sheepfold, and he steals the sheep. And the ones that cannot steal, he kills them, right? Destroys them. And it says in verse 10, the thief comes to kill, to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the 
do not steal in the seventh commandment. It says, do not steal, but yet people go in and steal. What's happening today too? Not only steal, but they kill. A lot of people have died because of the riots. And in uh, the commandment number five says, do not murder, and yet this is happening right now around us. And so I just want to say that the thief comes in the back, steals, kills, and destroys. And we can see his handiwork all around us. Now, the thief is also, and of course the thief is the devil, right? There's a lot of deception that the thief does, deceiving the sheep. And I just want to give you three examples. Last year, there was two prominent people. I'm not going to name them by name, but I just want to say this pastor for a mega church, 11 years, he's also an author. He denounced his faith. He's deceived by the thief. Also, this songwriter for Hillsong, right? He's great. He's wrote a lot of popular songs, and yet he denounced his faith. And then, just recently, a week ago, another songwriter, a popular group, Christian group, their lead singer denounced his faith. So there's a lot of deception going around, and the devil is coming in and stealing and killing and destroying. And I just want to say, you know what, if you want to go to the internet and look them up, look them up and also pray for them. Amen? Pray for these people that they will come back to the Lord. So, you know, again, there's a lot of protests going on, and the protests are good, right? It's part of the First Amendment, the Bill of Rights, that we are uh, free to assemble, free to associate, and free the freedom of speech, right? We have all of that. We have to have a peaceful demonstration, and it's, a, it's a, our rights, and unfortunately, there's other people doing the wrong thing and following this thief that comes in. But not only about this thief, but also in verse 7 and 9, which are our key verses today. Verses 7 and 9. It says, Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. What a wonderful thing. You see, the sheep, the shepherd, oftentimes the shepherd will, uh, will gather their 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 sheep, and they would go, there's maybe like two or three, even they partner up, and they said, you know what, we're going to take our flocks, and we're going to go in this sh sheepfold, and this other shepherd is going to guard them overnight, so that's what they do, so they gather all of these flocks, different flocks, three or four, they go in this sheepfold, and then in the morning, when the owner, when the shepherd comes, the shepherd will come by the door and calls the sheep. And the sheep recognizes the voice of the shepherd and they follow. They come out of the other flocks and they follow the shepherd out to go to the pasture. And that is a wonderful illustration again of the good shepherd. He comes by the door and he calls us by name. And we hear his voice and we follow him. And I want to say that God knows your name. Amen? Amen. By name. As a matter of fact, in that culture, those shepherds, they actually name their sheep. So they know. Uh, and I think about my dog, right? Our dog at home. Uh, even the dog is way, way at the fence over there at the corner. If I say, Brownie, the dog looks, <laughs> looks at me and then runs come to me. And so, you know, that's a dog, but these are sheep, right? And they hear the master's voice, and they come. A wonderful, wonderful thing. Also, when the shepherd comes, and it takes him out of the sheepfold, and goes to the pasture, um, now I want to share this, because this is kind of the 
The sheep fold, the shepherd stands by the door. He sees some of the sheep, excuse me, inside the sheep fold, and he sees some of them uh, on the outside of the pasture. And the sheep can come in and out. Right? Come in and out. And the shepherd is standing there and is watching. Watching all the sheep. And this is a wonderful illustration how God sees us, right? He watches us. No matter where we are, we're in the pasture. We're in the sheepfold. He's there and he's watching and he's protecting us. And I want to say today that although there's this COVID-19 pandemic all around us, and a lot of us are worried, a lot of us are uh, scared, and and I just want to say that we have to take get you know wisdom to protect ourselves, but also know that pandemic, there's COVID-19, there's Ebola, there's a bunch of other diseases out there, there's uh, killings, Christians are being killed all around us, you know that. If you go to persecution.org, it's a website, you can read all about the Christians that have been killed out there. A lot of things are going around us, and we're so worried, and I just want to sh uh, share this with you, that although there's a lot of stuff going on, even our economy is kind of going down, a lot of people have lost their jobs, I want to say that Jesus is in control, amen? amen. Jesus is in control, and he sees the whole pictures. He sees those that are in the sheepfold, and he sees those that are out in the pasture. What a wonderful thing. He is in control. He is sovereign. So the sheepfold, we've talked about that. We talked about the thief. And we talked about the door. Jesus at the door. And you can say that this is also an illustration about the door, that Jesus is the way. Amen. He is the door to salvation. Amen. Right? And I just want to say that even in, in Jesus said it in John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Again, it shows that, that Jesus, if you want to get to heaven, if you want to be in glory and live everlasting life, is Jesus. Amen? Amen? He is the gate. He is the door. And that is our lesson today. And I just want to say, and I challenge to all of you, and for myself too, that whenever you come to our car doors, or you go home and you hold that, that doorknob, right? About to turn it. Look at the door, and challenge is to just praise the Lord that He is our door. Amen? And just to have that reminder every time, Jesus, thank you for being the door. Thank you for allowing me to be in glory with you one day that I take my last breath. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for taking care of me. Thank you that you are right there by the door watching over me. Amen? Amen. So that's our challenge. And with that, I'm going to close in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord, for this story that you gave, that you are the good shepherd, that you are the door. And we ask for your spirit to continue to speak to us, continue to draw us to yourself. Father, draw near. Draw us near you. And help us, Lord, to put our trust, our confidence in you that you are taking care of us. And Lord, help us from the enemy. Keep us secure, Lord. Give us the discernment, not to be deceived. And Father, again, we thank you for everything. We thank you. We give you all the glory, Lord. Be with us and bless our day. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that message, Captain. We're going to go ahead and sing He Knows My Name just one more time um, this morning.
before even time began, my life was in his hands. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. a special announcement today. This is a good announcement for our core, um, so no need to be afraid, right? <laughs> like it says in the Bible, do not fear. So I would ask for your core officers, uh, captains, Ruathan, to come and join us here on the podium. And uh, Captain, if, if you would come a little closer and be on the other side, excellent. Okay, uh, great. So it's our pleasure today on behalf of the Territorial Commander and the uh, Divisional Commander and Sedila of the Salvation Army Cascade Division to uh, present to you with and to, uh, to install you as Majors of the Salvation Army today. Today you are being promoted to the rank of Major in honor of your years of service. So uh, I'll give you a chance to clap in just a moment. But uh, if I can give you this short charge. So first of all, um, I want to say thank you for the years of service that you've already given. I know that uh, both of you served the Lord before you became officers. Um, I know that uh, you, my brother, made the incredible jump of moving cultures and languages to serve the Lord as a missionary here in the United States. And I thank you and honor you for that. Um, and, uh, and I honor you, Captain Shoshana, uh, for, uh, for taking on that, a cross-cultural marriage, and uh, um, doing all that, that that requires and serving in many different places, both here in the mainland, uh, in the islands, and, and in other places before that. Um, so the Lord only knows how many people that you have touched and how many souls that you have brought into his kingdom because of your faithful service. But, uh, but we know that it has been many, and we are grateful that uh, we can be part of that journey even for a short time. So as we honor your service today, and really that's what your promotion means, that you have served the Lord faithfully as officers of the Salvation Army for 15 years. And that, that is a long time to serve in the Lord's kingdom. But we pray that it is just the beginning of many more years of fruitful service, both as active officers and as retired officers. We often see your father here at the Corps, and we know that he is no less active than he was before he retired. It's just that he gets to choose where and what he does. 
We know that he has been to the Philippines several times and that the Lord has allowed him to bless the Army's ministry there. And we trust that you, in all the good ways, will follow in the footsteps of those giants of the faith who've gone before. But for now, I say, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, but who rightly handles the word of truth. And we are grateful that that is what you do here each week, that you give the word of God and you give it straightly to us in a way that we can understand and in a way that challenges us and helps us to grow in the Lord. So it's my privilege today, along with my wife, to present you with uh, letters from the, the uh, Secretary for Personnel and uh, your Divisional Commander, and to present you with your Major's trim and the, uh, the pips for your Major's uh, epaulets, which are very difficult to put on the epaulets, so I will not attempt to do that now. But uh, if you would, uh, um, we will have a prayer of dedication, and then I will ask my son to photograph us, if, if he would, so that the divisional commander can also uh, uh, see that this, this has taken place as it should. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for our friends. We thank you, Lord, for blessing them and allowing them to serve us. God, today, I pray that you would bless them in an amazing way that you would pour your spirit out upon them, that you would be their strength, their shield, and their guide as they continue forward in ministry. Lord, you have given them amazing talents and abilities. Lord, fill them with your spirit for this day and every day for the rest of their lives and use them, Lord, in a mighty way to continue to bring men and women and boys and girls into your kingdom, that they would be saved, that they would be discipled, and that they would grow up to give this message out to as many people as can possibly hear it, the message of salvation through you, Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and our God. Lord, bless them today in this day of celebration as they are promoted to majors in the Salvation Army. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you please join me in greeting majors Shoshana and Celestine Ruithin. Thank you. And if there are other announcements, yes. To you. Well, thank you. That was a nice surprise. <laughs> uh, we knew the day was coming up, but we didn't know that we'd be um, promoted today. So thank you for that. That was a, a blessing. And you know, um, I've been talking with uh, Deborah, one of our church members, and she's been touching base and kind of saying how it's interesting ever since we've been here in Gresham it's been kind of like one thing after another but you know what um, that's just what it is to be part of the family of God and part being a part of the family of God and being an officer in the Salvation Army it's our joy and our privilege to be with you today and um, hmm, there it is there's that hug <laughs> um, and um, you know as things go up and down um, we're just so encouraged by you and the, the fact that you surround us, mistakes and all, that you'll just keep supporting us, saying, you know, girl, guy, you, you know you're new here, and just, we'll just keep doing our best to serve the Lord with you, and um, we'll see where he takes us in this community. So we pray, praise the Lord for that. Um, I just want to have a few more announcements before we sing our closing benediction today, is you've been getting your weekly newsletters. If you have not been... Um, added to the Remind app. I encourage you to do so if you can. If not, give me your email and I'll try to figure out how to get you that newsletter with all of the announcements that we have every week. And then um, also next week, we are gonna attempt to appreciate our graduates. We have six graduates, high school graduates in our church and we um, are inviting them to come out and we want you to bring a sign, say ha congratulations, congratulations, Bring noisemakers, bring your voices, because we're going to scream in this chapel for them, just like we were at a live graduation. We just want to make sure that they know that they are loved and we are proud of them. So come one, come all, which leads me to the next announcement. Yes, come one, come all. 
We're going to open our doors next week. Um, you want to come to church? Come to church. We've tried to separate chairs. We've tried to get our sanitizers going. Come as you feel comfortable. Come with a mask. Come without a mask. Um, we're going to have to separate into several rooms. We can only have 25 per room. But if you want to be here, come. And so we are looking forward to that time to see you next week. Come with your voices. Other than that, let's go ahead and sing our closing benediction today. It's a little bit different than what we had before we separated, but it's the same words, the same sentiment, and we'll sing it together. The blessing. Oh, this microphone keeps falling. You might have to take the lead. All right, let's try it. It was a blessing to have all of you here today, and we will see you next week. Have a blessed week.